Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tech Connect Podcast. I'm John Martin. And I'm Dean Reverman. Dean, uh, you probably have a lot of devices around your house, right? I do. I got kids. We got devices. We yeah. got a ton of devices. Devices actually. everywhere. They're I mean, everywhere. How do, you, how do you keep track of everything? No. Well, we step on them. We <laughs> don't really keep track of them. They're, like they're over they here. Are. Yeah, like there's uh, there's like five charging stations. Yeah, in our exactly. House. Are they charged? No, they're everywhere. Is the software updated? No, they're in this. They're in the cushions of the of the sofa. Are they and, broken? Yeah, right. Do they still actually work? Oh boy, where are you going with this? Well, right. I mean, now imagine that situation, but in like a giant warehouse or enterprise manufacturing facility where you've got tens or hundreds of these mm-hmm. devices. Mm-hmm. Yep, gotcha. kind of important to keep track of them and know what's going on with them, right? You would think so. They're you know a little more a little more expensive potentially. <laughs> than, you know, yeah. our devices at home. A little more yeah, important yeah. that they be... Mission critical. Can I go with that? There you Mission go. critical. Mission critical. So yeah. that's that's our topic today. We're going to talk about keeping track of those with intelligent cabinets Very nice. and mobile device management. We've got uh, Randy Murphy from Zero joining us today. Yep. Uh, he's going to help us talk a little bit about, you know, where this technology came from, this, this idea of the intelligent cabinet, mm. some of the different types of mm-hmm. options that are available out there for, if, you know, for various enterprises to keep track of their devices, some of the benefits, the mm-hmm. ROI, basically like, you know, how you can position these to, mm-hmm. you know, to your money, customers. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then, and, yeah, and again, we'll wrap it up with our usual value to the bar of, you know, how how do, selling these particular uh, solutions can help you sell more of those devices. Bingo. Actually, too. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, all that plus our usual what's tech connecting with us. It's time to plug in and get connected. Welcome to the Tech Connect Podcast. It's time to get connected. All right, welcome back to the Tech Connect Podcast. Uh, this week we are brought to you by Intel, who wants to remind you that Blue Star's Bon Appetit, hosted by Dean Reverman, oh, there you go. is is back in action with a new season. New episodes are airing right now. Uh, and uh, Intel has a special cool little segment called Mixing Mix it, it Up, up with yes. Intel yes. On, on some of our episodes. So I Pretty highly cool. recommend you check it out. Uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, uh, definitely subscribe to Blue Star's YouTube channel so you'll see when those get added to our playlist. Mm-hmm. And uh, also make sure you're following us on socials, subscribe to our emails, whatever you need to, so you can be notified about new episodes when they come out. All right, as I mentioned, our guest today is Randy Murphy from Zebra. He is Zebra's channel solutions man- manager. Randy, welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of what you do on a day-to-day basis. Well, thanks, guys, and it's a pleasure to be here. So I've been with Zebra almost seven years now in, uh, in the channel. And what I have access and uh, what I do is provide uh, the solution of intelligent cabinets, and others to the our partner industry to the part to the channels all over North America, Canada, and U.S. Mm. So I am being partner focused. I am here to support those partners and educate them and uh, edu- uh, on how to position the product itself and the solution, and then the benefits and then the value of it. So being with Zebra, this is that we've developed some really great tools. What you guys were talking about in the beginning. Now we're in a world of you, you don't have to worry about losing anything because you will. You can always know where devices are and what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so critical. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Well, then let's get into it then. Let's talk about this idea of the intelligent cabinet and, and start off by defining what that is. What, is, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And how did, this, how did we get to this point where this kind of technology was developed and why? Sure. So the reason it was developed is because there's a need and has been a need uh, in, the, in, the, in the world uh, to replace, uh, to not have to replace devices. So many times uh, an end user will will buy, you know, they'll buy X amount and then they've got to buy X percent to keep in storage just in case because they're losing them, there could be theft. There's a lot of different things that can happen. So with that said, we came up with our uh, brilliant engineers came up with this. It's a cabinet, it's a locking cabinet, but what it does, it has our zebra access management system that is part of this. And what it does, it gives you that not only the health of the devices, what's going on with the battery, but it also, you know who's checking that battery out. You also, you can do it in, a, there's a lot of different ways, but the entire, the, the purpose of the uh, intelligent cabinets, you prevent damage and loss, you can manage and update devices. Everything can be done while they're in these cradles inside the cabinet or inside a rack, depending on what you're, what you're purchasing. You optimize workflows by doing this. You're going to stop 
all of this of losing devices, a device walking out the door, or having to walk across a facility just to pick up a device. You can uh, you know, strategically put the devices in these intelligent cabinets or racks at different places in the facility. And I, I like that. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the behavior that happens around some of these devices, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're in a warehouse environment that, that doesn't have one of these, and, and maybe this is a question for you, Randy, uh, you know, is one of the benefits, so you, like we started off, you know, devices can be here, there, right, everywhere, right. higgledy, Scattered piggledy, all around. where's the charging? I don't know. And a house is one thing, but a warehouse right, or a manufacturing right. facility is yeah. something I mean, different. Like yeah. the warehouse worker is leaving and they put it in their locker, right. you know, yep, or, or yep. whatever. And but, but what this will help to do, I can imagine is kind of change some of that behavior and get people into the motion that hey when i'm done with the shift this device goes here it goes in this this you know cabinet uh, it's going to get recharged it's going to get the new software stuff like that but right uh, so i can see that as being a potential benefit here as well yep and and it, it prevents and cuts back on those uh those wonderful frontline workers that want to keep that device because it's their favorite device because mm -hmm. now through the access management system, whether it's on the, the rack or the cabinet, or if it's they're looking through the portal or on their online on their desktop, they can see in real time, okay, Randy checked this out, but he's been gone now for two hours and he never checked it back in. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. now they'll be able to, as soon as I come back in the next day, they'll be able to contact, be able to pull me in front of them and say, what's going on with this device? Because now before you check a device out, you'll be able to see, you know, how many devices are charged and ready to go which ones are still charging and which ones have not been returned. And maybe it's due to if somebody's got another device on a shift. But that's the that's one of the huge things about it because now theft and loss, I mean, that's one of the largest items that drops substantially with this because you know who's got them, what's going on with them, where they are, and the health of them. So, so you're saying the benefit here, I mean, think about the, the person who's in charge with, of the operation, right? Managing mm -hmm. the operation. And if you don't have this kind of intelligence behind, the, behind where your devices are, it, it can be maddening, right? No I can accountability. Imagine, you know? I can imagine that yeah. would be quite maddening mm -hmm. to, uh, to not know. I was wondering, you know, and can I use the acronym ZAM? Do you guys use the Zebra Access Management System as like ZAM? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I, I thought I saw that written somewhere. That's why I'm using okay. it. Yeah. But anyway. I thought you are just making up your own no, acronym. No, I'm just yeah. making up my own yeah. stuff. Well, ZAM. I a lot, but... <laughs> 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 but I, I didn't know if the ZAM was, was proximity-based, meaning like if the, if, the, if the device got too far. But what you're saying is it's more of a check-in, check-out. Like, well, I got the device. I, Dean has checked this device out. My shift is over, and now it's going to say, hey, by the way, the device was never returned. So from a management standpoint, I can see that, right? Right. Oh, Dean didn't. Right. Yeah. You, again, you, the, the ZAM, the, the, it's a CC6000 that has a software on it. You, again, that could be attached to a cabinet or rack, or if you have a room you want to do this in, put it outside. Or you've got uh, IT folks looking at their, their desktops. So everything is available. All the software, you're going to see this real time no matter where you are. It's, it's not as if you have to go look at this. Uh, this this device that has the access management system running on. You know, do you have any statistics? And I don't mean to put you on the spot here, Randy, but any statistics around, you know, once you put in an intelligent cabinet, uh, if the main idea here is to thwart the theft and the loss, uh, do, you, do you have any statistics around that just yet, like a 10% savings and theft or loss or, or maybe not? Well, it's on the loss side <clears throat> because you're, the devices are not being able to walk out the door. Mm. They're not being able to be hidden in desks and drawers and things like that. So mm -hmm. it, it is, it's high, but I don't know. I can't sit here and say, well, it's 20% or it's as low. You know, it's, I, it, it's about as low as 11%. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as we get more of these intelligent cabinets out there, because there's people are starting to see the value of this. And now in the facility where, you have either a manned facility for checking, check in and check out a device or an unmanned facility. You can go in there and sometimes in the unmanned facilities, uh, workers can go in and just grab a device and then start working. You can't do that with intelligent cabinets. Yeah. You have to log into a device to be able to use it. Gotcha. And maybe we can dive even a little bit more into some of the intelligence behind that and in, in what you guys have packed into your cabinet. So not only is it is it a centralized place, right, and we can manage the device, but it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it's doing obviously the power charge, right? We're charging it up. Uh, sure. we, can, we can do software updates on, on the device as well. These are yep. connected via Wi-Fi, you know, 4G, whatnot. So it has that capability to transfer, transmit data, I would imagine, right? Uh, are those some of the other things that oh, kind yeah. of come into the intelligence, if you will, of these cabinets? 
Absolutely. I mean, everything you just said, I mean, it, it's, it, you can, from the OS updates, uh, from managing the batteries, everything from the cradles, you have the, the, uh, the cups, the, the charging cups, and even the locking cradles we have for very different types of devices. You can have a locking cradle, meaning you log into that device right there in the cradle. It pops up, it unlocks, and then you can take the device. You're ready to start your work. But all of this, everything manages that device. It gives you the health. And again, if the battery going, is it good? Is it strong? Has, you know, what shift is it in? Why is it not charged? You can see all the analytics from there. But that's what this system does. It keeps the frontline worker from having to go out and come back, go back by the water cooler and shoot the bull a little bit and say, well, you know, I'm going to have to change a battery out now. That goes away. <laughs> I imagine that has a positive effect as well on like repair and maintenance. Uh, you know, I can just imagine if, again, if you don't know where the device is and then Larry comes back and says, oh, yeah, I for, sorry, I forgot to plug it back in. And then right, right. we get it powered back up when we realize there's some maintenance issue right. with it. Now we're further behind the eight ball, right? I mean, they'll know, they'll know right away. I mean, as soon as that they put the device back in the cradle, mm. it's going to tell the tale. You mm -hmm. know, if the battery's not charging, you know, there's there's triggers that can be set. So those that are watching this will see that and you can better manage your uh, all of your devices and batteries and everything. Makes yeah, it, is it correct that I saw some of the some of your cabinets have the actual tablet on the the unit itself, and is that the the zebra yeah. the, the Zam is right there? But is also some of it where it could be networkable? You could be remote and not yes. be on that. Yeah, okay, that's why it's I the CC six thousand, mm -hmm. and it, it can mount to the cabinet. Uh, you can mount it to a rack. You can mount it to a wall. But again, you, you don't have to. You don't have to have and be right in front of it because you've got you know, IT departments and you can see this via your, your computers, laptops and see what's going on. Just like a, it's a network management tool yeah. actually. Yeah. So, and you can look at, see it for this location, for other locations uh, that are on campus or around the globe, it doesn't matter. Mm. Gotcha. So you mentioned, you mentioned cradle locks, for instance. And when I was mm -hmm. looking over uh, the whole, you know, zebra intelligent cabinets, you know, so suite of solutions, there's things like you know, cabinets, racks, cradle locks, carts, can you help us kind of understand what those different options are and yeah, maybe, and maybe right? give us a simple use case for mm -hmm. each one too of why you would why you would pick a cabinet versus a rack etc well it's a lot of times uh you'll, you'll get a, a cabinet because you don't have any extra room or an area to you know you, that you're housing your devices because they they're sitting on tables mm. you got some charging over here and over there now so you want to get a rack you want and it might not be need to be a, a, an extra large rack but anyway a rack or a cabinet that you can a cabinet you can close and you can lock the door. But once you unlock the door on the cabinet, the cabinet doors are unlocked. It's mm -hmm. not it nothing has to do with an auto locking or unlocking mechanism. So with a rack, uh, instead of a cabinet, you can have stand that up and you could be double sided so you can hold a lot more. But again, everything you put into the intelligent cabinets, it, it can hold up to 100 devices, but it, it is form factor dependent. As an example, you might only be able to get uh, in a large cabinet uh, 32 MC uh, 9300s, mm -hmm. but in a large cabinet, you might be able to get uh, right at 100 of the TC devices. Mm -hmm. So it's all form factor dependent, but everything you put in there, you'll be able to see and it, it keeps everything, it, it, it fully optimizes everything. So, and you can have separate the devices and put them in different parts of a facility. So now you know people are going, they're not having to go all the way across the facility to get their device. And with that said, kind of a rule of thumb with this, the CC6000 and the, the Zebra Access Management device, it's typically about 100 devices per uh, CC6000. And so that could mean you could have MC9300s uh, in one cabinet, there's 32 there. You could have some TC devices and others. But, you know, the rule of thumb, again, it's 100 devices. So it's not one you know, one CC6000 per cabinet or rack. Okay. Gotcha. Makes sense. So then, all right, well, we've, we've kind of talked, and Dean's hinted at this a little bit already, mm -hmm. some of the benefits, some right. of the ROI here. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, you're, if you're a reseller and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to go out and, and, and sell these to somebody and explain mm -hmm. to them, like, here's why you need this. So, Randy, help us with a little more detail on that. What is the, the benefit here to deploying these solutions? How do they assist with this overall lifetime device management? Right. And good question. So as I said earlier, the, the loss and the theft drops off substantially because you see where everything is. Once deployed, 
the devices will always be ready to go. There is not a matter of, I need to check to make sure it's got the correct OS and all the security patches are there. Everything is done via the, you know, when they're in their cups or cradles or the charging cradles, everything is done there. So mm -hmm. all of that is, is removed from, from the issue of the operational cost. So now you've got, uh, you've been, where you've been ordering multiple devices for spares, you really don't need to order all of those devices for spares that many anymore because you can better plan. You've got a system that's going to tell you in advance what's going on with the devices. And that's where that that's huge money savings. That and the loss and theft are the three largest items that the intelligent cabinets, the value of them brings to an operational system. Yeah, it's kind of like it's it's automating the workflow a little bit more, <laughs> right? Uh, which I think is is a main benefit there, uh, and that's going to have an impact on just worker hours mm -hmm. in general. I mean, yep. you're kind of maximizing more of the workers' time because there's not the there's not the hunting, there's not you know, hey, the scanner I was using is not here anymore, right? Uh, type of a thing. So it it's it's just intuitive that once you kind of centralize some of these uh, some of this these devices, you're going to see some of that, right? Yeah, uh, some yeah. of the ROI come in almost Absolutely. immediately. From from that yeah no. at, at the end of the day it's it's all about end-to-end -end traceability and mm -hmm. you know accountability to the end user so now you've got all this locked in and, and that's huge yep. yep yep yeah and i would think obviously like the the idea of not of not having to worry about being understocked or overstocked on your devices mm -hmm. is huge like where you don't want to be in that situation where you find you're missing a device and you have to go out and overnight one or, you know, scramble to, to get something together when it wasn't necessarily part of your budget or you've got to pay more to get something overnighted. You got to put in that extra effort to get mm -hmm. it up and running and ready to go for mm -hmm. your for the next day or whatever. Or in the other situation, yeah, again, having 20 extra devices or 10 right. extra devices. At, and these or, things aren't cheap. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> just just because, you know, you know that you're potentially going to lose some and you want to have yeah. backups. Like, right. you shouldn't have to worry about that. You should have, I mean, if, if you want to have one spare maybe, just, just because you might need it, that's fine. But you shouldn't have to carry so many extra spares and, yeah, just because right. you, you you know stuff's going to walk off or break or something and you're just not prepared for any of that. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. And you can, again, you have, <clears throat> like I said earlier, full traceability end to end. You can see where they are in the facility. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of huge benefits with this. And as you look at one looks at this, if I'm buying X amount of devices, so now I don't have to buy, you know, 20 or 30% more or even 15% more for spares. I should have, I can do that it, it, unless I buy intelligent cabinets and you don't need all that extra spares. You just need the ones that are for critical mass. Mm -hmm. So then, to your point, you've cut down all that. You've saved the operation. You, your costs come down and it drops straight to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So it will change your operational workflows as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can imagine, right? I mean, you see, we see these devices being used, not just back of house, but even front of house. Any, any of the Zebra TC models, for example, I mean, they're sleek and they look like cell phones and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're going to have workers that are like, you know, just throw it in their pocket and, you know, yep. out the door they go. They think, oh, you know, I got a new cell phone. Yep. <laughs> just, yeah. And it's uh, like, no, we, we need to be able to, yeah. to know who did that. Exactly. And have yeah. the ability. Yeah. Right? Just because it just just because it has the feel and the look of a phone doesn't right. mean it's the same right. thing and you can't treat it the same way. Right. I, I was just at the grocery store on my way here today and I stopped in and I was just look, quickly looking to grab something. There was a worker literally right next to me who was sitting there doing checks and changing out tags mm -hmm. and pricing or something. Had mm -hmm. a Zebra device in yep. her hand. Yep. At first, I just thought she was just a random consumer because again the device looked <laughs> right. like a normal looks phone. Like it. Right, right. And then I realized like, oh no, she's working. And I was like, oh, it's a zebra device, of course, you know. Yeah. Changing tags to walk out, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you know, I was watching her work. And I'm thinking like, well, you know, that's very timely. I was thinking about with this podcast today. I'm like, yeah, I, I hope, I hope that she has an efficient, easy way to go. You know, recharge this thing at the end of the day and keep track of it, and that they know what she's got, where it's at, is it up to date? So. Good no, stuff, but I, yeah. I do love yeah. the improvement of the workflow. Sorry, Randy. And, you know, and just in the sense that I know that you guys were dealing with that, right? I mean, these these are form factors that that are just gone that way, and which for all the right reasons. But man, it just uh, you know, I can just imagine being an operations manager and the theft that oh, is yeah. happening yeah. because those devices are so intriguing. To uh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I missed. Uh, no, I left it in the restroom. You're going to say it's, uh, it's Randy? easy to slip that in your well, pocket yeah, versus well, one with a big old trigger yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, and it's also the fact that there are areas in 
some places there's people will just walk into a store or they may know that in the back of a store it's unlocked they can just mm. go in there and grab some devices yeah. they don't know if they're worth a penny or if they're worth a thousand dollars but nonetheless it still happens yeah so now you've got you know after you put that to rest because now you've got yeah. devices that are locked down yeah. you know by the way if i go to if i go to pick up a device out of a cradle and in, inside of a cabinet or a rack and i don't log in within say 20 seconds or whatever that alarm's going to start going off and it's excruciatingly loud, which is good. <laughs> Telling me, right. put me back in the cradle or log in. But if, if you want me to be quiet, you got to do one of those two things. But the <laughs> other big thing is now these workers, one device to do everything. Mm. You don't need two devices, three or four devices anymore right. to mm -hmm. do the work that they do in a, on a sh daily shift. One device for everything. Yeah. Love the security aspect. I guess we didn't really yeah, get awesome. into that yeah, yeah. All, all that much, but I didn't know that, Randy. So no thanks one, for bringing no that up. No one wants to be that worker that's no. standing in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Everyone's looking at you I'm like, no. or the thief, you know, yeah, that's like yeah, grabbed yeah. it out of the back room or whatnot. And now this thing's exploding kind right, of in there right. with audio yeah. wise. So that's cool. Right. So you're adding to the security uh, of the whole <laughs> right. operation. And that's also, that's one of the other benefits of the locking cradles because the locking cradles, uh, you log into the device while it's in there, and it, you, after you log in, the cradle pops or the the locking cradle pops mm -hmm. up, and now everything you're off to go, off to the races. Gotcha. Yeah. But you're not going to just you'd have to pick up the whole cabinet to get that thing out of there. Gotcha. There you go. Yeah, yeah that that's going to be a little more obvious if you're trying well, to trying to carry a big cabinet <laughs> under your arm right. out of the place. You know, it's kind of like stealing an ATM. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you can't just walk out of wherever with this <laughs> right, big old right. cradle. Yeah, of, it's a little, little more obvious. Yeah. Ten units. Yeah. You got a little more privacy for that. But something with that too is you know I started. In the, or in the beginning of this talking about the different you know cabinets and racks but there's six different sizes of cabinets so you can have something as small as a that'll hold just a few devices on like a stadium shelf on a wall to you know a, a various a, like a medium-sized wall mount and then up to an extra large that'll hold 100 devices so you can put these again nobody's going to be able to get in there and take something without logging in so you'll always know who's got it but i mean the security aspect of it and whether it's in this facility, whether it's in a facility on a campus, or if you've got made, if you've got responsibility for all of your uh, corporation's facilities, they could be a global company. Mm -hmm. You're going to see everything. Mm -hmm. That's a nice. really good point, Randy. I'm glad you brought that up because you know I, I was initially thinking of these devices being used in larger applications. Mm -hmm. Quite candidly, mm -hmm. you know, warehouses that have tens, hundreds of, of employees. But to your point, uh, even with the smaller form factor, I wow. mean, even if you only have four or five devices, well, and doing, you know, a small retail back right, room, back right. house or something like that. Hey, that's still important. You know, well, these devices are not cheap. Exactly. So. And you got to think, especially if you're a small mid-sized business and you maybe only have a handful I'm sure the cost of them is much is felt much more oh, yeah. when you're that small business. Yeah. Yes. That shelling out, you know, however much it is mm -hmm. to get just one even mm -hmm. can be a very prohibitive expense, you know, yeah. for you. And you definitely don't want to lose them at that point. Yeah. It's one thing to be a giant enterprise that has right. hundreds and can like, all right, I can I absorb can, I can yeah. absorb one or two mm -hmm. extras, you know, that's fine. But yeah, a small business that knows like, all right, I need three or four of these mission critical items here. I can't afford to lose any. I can't afford to have to replace any. I need them to, to be there when I need them and to work every time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and it could, from a mom and pop shop to an SMB, I mean, it, you're right. I mean, the cost is much more, <laughs> it's much more prevalent because you're not buying as many. So I, I, I'm assuming and sure that as you get into the thousands, your, your discounts get greater. But at the end of the day, it is more prevalent in the SMB and in, in the, on the smaller businesses. So, and that's the beauty though, because now you've got, you've got a full secure, it's like a secure, security detail. These things aren't going to keep disappearing anymore. No, and you I, don't have to buy as much, and that and that is that's huge because that all that's all the ROI. I mean, it, it all works into that mm -hmm. and goes back into the core. Yeah. So yeah, when you think about the lifetime of that device, right? And in in when when workers have again, I'll just kind of go back to that behavior thing where oh, you know, my employer thinks this is a serious device; it needs to be locked up and put away. And I, right. I mean, it, right? right? It kind of raises right. the stakes a little bit, not you know the perception, but also the reality is, you know, again with the updates that we've discussed and stuff like that, that device is going to last longer. It's going to have the propensity to be there longer right. physically. Right. Uh, so yeah. you're going to get more out of it, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's no different than you. Know, 
know, I, I, you know, I'm assigned a laptop for work. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know that's not my laptop. Right. I'm expected to take care of it. I'm expected to, yeah. to treat it right and know that it's an expensive piece of equipment. Yeah. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. I think that helps reinforce that attitude for the worker at that level too. Yeah. But if know? it's a device that they're just used to, you know, using during the day and then throwing on a table it, at exactly. the end of the shift right. and it's kind of scoots into the right. corner <laughs> under the fries <laughs> and the Big Mac box and it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. That's and we a good do point. that once or twice, but uh, guess what? <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town. There you um, go. <laughs> stuff, stuff starts to happen. Uh, people are going to start getting called on the carpet, and yeah. rightfully so, because to your point, it's not their device. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's Sher- right. Sheriff Zam's going to come for you. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Randy, let's let's kind of wrap this up on a tiny bit of a tangent here. That's not quite talking about this exact applications here, but you know, there's there's obviously similar technology that's being deployed in in some other industries to improve workflows. This idea of again, like intelligent cabinets or spaces mm-hmm. where you can store things intelligently and keep mm-hmm. track of your assets. Can you tell us maybe about a few things that are going on out there that you've been hearing about? You know, as far as the way this kind of technology or similar technology can be used again to to keep track of important assets for different industries oh yeah i mean there's a lot of things you know with with bundling solutions together you've got uh you know voice communications as i said earlier one device to do all your communications collaboration and your work scanning no matter what uh the other thing there's some really cool things going on that have already gone on and i'm sure you guys have probably heard about it but it's what we did with the nfl uh, oh, with yeah. RFID. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was really fascinating. Put RFID tags under the sh- on the shoulder pads and put an RFID tag in the football with all the analytics. Yeah, I mean, that right there, that kind of st- <laughs> that's that starts the asset tracking, and we're using those same technologies, you know, in the world in in different types of warehouse environments, retail store environments, healthcare facilities, uh, trucking industries, manufacturing, hospitality. I mean, it's. It's, it's almost like there are horizontal solutions for all the verticals, but that's really cool because it's cool. But at the end of the day, now the fact that I can track not only the device inside or outside the walls, but also I can see that Randy's got it inside the walls and outside the walls. Hmm. You mm. know, <laughs> that, that, that kind of raises a different, uh, different question of even with, if you're communicating, if I forget to turn mine off at night, then somebody can say, Oh, here he is. Yeah. So, but there's, it's really, it's great for what, what's going on because it's changing the world as we know it today. And it's changing it a lot quicker, a lot quicker now than it used to. Yeah. I think the, the technology is enabling, you know, smart cabinetry, if you will, mm-hmm. in other verticals mm-hmm. as well. I mean, you know, you've got medical use cases yep. where uh, obviously dosing and wanting to keep control, like right, literal right. control yeah. over, over some You can't of let anybody things. just open up a cabinet and take, take important medicine. It, away, right. You know. <laughs> That stuff happens. Oh, yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or high value assets. You know, we're starting to see it some in government play, for yep. example, you know, yep. police office or uh, police departments, mm-hmm. things of that nature where you have, you know, guns and or whatever devices yeah. that you do not want people to walk out with. So right. there's this blending of RFID technology and tagging and, and creating kind of some of those smart cabinets mm-hmm. that we've seen uh, out and about. So, yeah, I, yeah. I think there's some to- tool deployment. That's one tool. I've been yeah, finding like, tool like, like mm-hmm. construction mm-hmm. sites and also like, you know, just within. In, yeah, within like a manufacturing facility mm-hmm. or something, you know, these intelligent tool cribs that similar concept again, but instead of, you know, being a, a mobile device of some sort, it's literally the tools of the trade that you're using and being yeah. able to check them yeah. out and having them them tagged and making sure that, you know, if, if you go and grab something when no one's around, it's, you know, you've got to log in, it's identifying that you're the one that's doing it and you're taking it away. So at the end of the day, if they need to find that, that, that tool or that piece of heavy machinery or equipment or something, mm-hmm. they know who has it and where it is. Yeah, I think that that's just going to continue, right? I mean, not just with these technologies that we've talked about, RFID, but as you and I have talked about, using machine vision and AI, you know, even, yep. hey, this person grabbed something from this shelf mm-hmm. and or whatever, mm-hmm. and we know through facial recognition who that person is, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I think that people are just going to be, they're going to know, mm-hmm. right? It, it, it's just a part of our society and workflows now that these devices and these smart cabinets are being utilized, and, and rightfully so, right. as we've yeah. determined here, right? Exactly. These are the yeah. devices of the employer type of thing yeah exactly to, to your point i mean with all of that with facial recognition i mean you never know you never know who you, you look somebody will look around to see is anybody watching but <laughs> oh yeah yeah look up pal <laughs> <laughs> someone is definitely watching yeah people would catch on to that by now but no they're no. still no yeah, yeah. they don't no they yeah. don't but i mean again what what's going on in the in the technology in our world is so great because it's it's being spread across all the verticals from the secure aspects to mm. the tracking aspects. It's all about safety. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get into corporations, you get into 
issues of TRI or total injury rate of return, which mm. could affect if you have to, if some a worker gets hurt or something on the job and they now they know where they are, they can see where they are immediately as opposed to having them sit there for a while and then they go home and then their you know premiums go up and things like that. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of factors that, that are being watched and key into the into all the technologies being released today. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Randy, thank you so much for this conversation. Before we wrap things up with a little takeaway for our VARs mm -hmm. and how they can uh, benefit from this, <laughs> if you haven't already figured that out, uh, I want to, as always, thank our sponsors, Datalogic, Elo, Epson, Honeywell, Intel, Zebra. I think I got them all. You got it. And, of course, thank you to Zebra for lending Randy to us today for this particular conversation. Uh, hey, as always, uh, if you like the show, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the like button for this episode. Subscribe to Blue Star's channel so you don't miss any of our content I mentioned earlier. Bon Appetit, our, the only channel cooking show, and it is literally a cooking show. That's right. Uh, is, is back. You're not going to want to miss episodes of that. Uh, and, hey, and if you listen to us on an audio format, uh, especially if you're doing Apple or uh, Spotify, please leave us a rating and review. We'd love to hear what you think of the show. And of course, if you want to talk to us, you know, let us know, you know, what you think about the show. Uh, you know, if you've got some suggestions for topics. We've done that. We have. You can find us on Twitter at TechConnectPod. Yeah. You can email us, TechConnect at BlueStarInc.com, or check the link in the show notes where you can find a place where you can submit some topic ideas. There you to go. So Absolutely. We've, we've done some already. We're happy to, to do some We more. threw down the gauntlet. It was answered. We did it. All right. Yeah. We can do more. More. We want to do more. Right. That. We want right. to do more. That's right. All right, so let's wrap things up with, as always, first, our value to the VAR. This is our, our opportunity to kind yep. of wrap up the conversation, give a takeaway for our audience, mm -hmm. maybe how they can utilize this information, make mm -hmm. some money off of it, mm -hmm. sell some solutions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Randy, I'll let you start here, obviously. Um, how does how does selling and deploying these type of intelligent cabinets and these storage options help VARs to sell more devices and services in general? Because I can imagine someone might be listening to this and saying, well, I kind of like it when the devices break down or get lost or something, <laughs> yeah. because then I get to sell more, right? But in reality, these kind of solutions can help you sell more too. Tell that's us how, right. that, how that works. Well, but you become more of a trusted advisor. I mean, that's kind that's of right. a cliche, but you, you, you know, you're deeper. You become stickier because now you're doing, their end user is seeing you as being, the, having their best interest in mind. Because yes, I could sell you 130 devices, which 30, 30 for storage, but hey, I'm only going to sell you 105 because you don't need all those others. And now when you bundle, when they bundle this together and the security aspect, that is huge because everybody, not everybody, but almost everybody has this problem with devices with legs. So you got to cut the legs off and this is what this will do. Security aspect, the end to end security, the accountability, it brings it all. And it will also it will cut the cost of the of the end users operational uh, business. I like that. Okay. I mean, that, that at the end of the road, that's what it's all about, right? We're, we're helping individuals mm -hmm. uh, with better solutions. Mm -hmm. And I actually came across a couple questions that I'm going to throw out there because, you know, when I, when I think about it, and I throw my VAR hat on, you know, how do I probe for opportunities around the intelligent cabin? I'm going to I'm going to give you three questions that I guess you could walk okay. in the door Let's with and say, and, and the answers to these questions can help you lead you down the path of opportunity. So ask these. You know, so you say, well, how closely can you track the chain custody custody? for each device. That's a good one, yeah, right? Yeah. Because uh, the XAM and the intelligent cabinet is going to help you do that. Right. Question number two, what's your confidence level in knowing who had which device, when, and what happened to it, right? right if you don't right. have that today, then, then like maybe... Like if you found a broken device, exactly. do you know who broke it? Exactly. And have they broken several devices? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. And, and how often uh, was it used throughout that worker's shift? So mm -hmm. these are just probing questions. Again, then number three, are you charging and updating devices on a manual or a one-off basis. So these are just some of those questions that you can ask and yeah. kind of probe a little bit. And if you're getting some positive response, you know, they don't know what the chain of custody is or they really don't have a very good plan for uh, doing device updates and stuff like that. Hey, now is your opportunity to kind of, again, be that be that trusted advisor, Randy. I think you're dead on there. Be the trusted advisor and say, hey, I think I can help you out here a little bit. Let's talk about intelligent right, cabinets. Right. Yeah. Right? But you dig it yep. deeper. You dig yeah. it deeper because then you've got... Then Every, then they will know. You ask those questions, mm -hmm. and everybody's going to start scratching their head because right. a lot mm -hmm. of people can't answer them. That's right. But that right there will will change the dialogue you have with it with a customer. Yeah. yeah. 
You yeah. know, and I think there's a very good message there also about, hey, if, if you're saving all of this money now by tracking and, and securing these devices and making sure you don't have to buy so many extra, you're not losing so many, they're not mm-hmm. breaking as often, mm-hmm. you're not wasting money on repairs or overnights, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Again, that's the kind of stuff where you can you can show someone, hey, here's the bottom line of this. Now that you don't have to buy 20 extra devices a year like you typically have been doing, that's savings that you that you now have to compound to maybe when the new iteration of this device comes out or a new yep. version and you want to make that upgrade, you've had that savings over time that makes it easier for you to incorporate that into your budget in the future. There you so go. Bingo. That's mm-hmm. how you can still sell some extra devices there and not <laughs> and not feel like you're being cheated out of it just because they're not breaking and losing all of them yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better planning. Better planning. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Yep. All right. Well, hey, let's wrap things up, as always, with our favorite segment, What's Tech Connecting with You? Uh, this is where we get to talk about something in the world of science, technology, innovation that has caught our eye, has our attention, something that's just on our mind lately. Uh, Randy, I'll let you kick off here. What's Tech Connecting with you right now? From what I've been reading in the uh, with what uh, Elon Musk is doing with putting these low-Earth orbital satellites for new broadband services. Yes, I mean, sir. Look, look at the technology that's deployed with that. I mean, just tracking satellites, but everything, but also being able, instead of having a fiber optic cable coming to my house or business, guess what? Now I can have, it, you know, it's, it, it's wonderful. It's incredible. It's mm-hmm. not like the old satellite communications, but it is, it's really, really high speed broadband data. I mean, that is cool because you can hit anywhere on the planet now. It just depends on, I know that the, the electronics and technology, but that think about, about what that is going to open up. That's probably one of the single largest thing changers that is going to change everything in our world. What we're doing today. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. completely agree. That that idea of being able to have reliable internet access anywhere, anywhere. in the world yeah. for anybody in any country that you know, whether you have the infrastructure in place that you've had before. Yeah, that you're right. It's going to be the the kind of game changer that ideally can change our world for the better in the future. I mean, just look what's yeah. happening in in the Ukraine right now, and the fact yep. that he sent over and you know, and all that kind of good stuff. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely tapping into some What about you, Dean? Cool What's stuff. tech connecting with you? All right. So I got it. Well, I got a couple of them because the headline here was MIT Tech Review reveals its annual list of top potential technology breakthroughs okay. for 2022. That's just salacious, I know, right? I mean, how can yeah, I that's not cl- that's read that? I mean, it's right. MIT for crying right. out loud. And they're telling you what they think is going to be, be the latest. So okay, some, of the, some of the normal, you know, so they have 10 of them. I'm not going to go into all of them. Okay. Some of them you may have already guessed, like there's a pill for the COVID vaccine and, and some stuff like right, that. Right. But I'll give you three of them. Long-lasting grid batteries. So, of course, I love batteries. Love your batteries. But yeah. it, these are cheap, long-lasting iron-based batteries that are supposed to be on the grid, right? So the whole issue with sustainable energy is, okay, we, we got solar, we got wind, but what happens when the sun ain't shining right. and the wind the ain't blowing, blowing. Yeah, right? right? So we got to be able to charge that. And and so there, the idea here is that these types of batteries, these iron-based batteries, might be one of those types that you can store energy for, you know, like 10 hours or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, you've got your array going, you can store it, and you can last through the evening uh, with that. So keep it, keep an eye out for long-lasting grid batteries. Okay. AI for protein folding. I didn't understand this, but I'm going to throw it at you. Nearly everything your body does, it does with proteins, right? right? Okay. And so the way a protein folds determines its activities, but figuring out the protein structure can take months. Now with AI called AlphaFold2 has solved a long-standing biological puzzle, which could make it possible to quickly design drugs for a wide ranges of diseases. So basically what it is, is it's like it's taking that timeline for developing drugs for diseases and just like compressing it okay. um, by using that kind of a technology. So again, AI for protein folding. Pretty cool. The last one I'll give you is proof of stake. So this is all around the cryptocurrencies. Let me throw this out at you. I didn't realize, you know, you hear about, well, cryptocurrency is consuming a lot of energy, right? right? right, And even Elon himself, I think, came out and said, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not, whether he's doing his Dogecoin and stuff right, like that. Right. Maybe it wasn't him. Somebody came out and said, I'm not doing crypto anymore because of the amount of right. uh, the environmental impact. Well, here it is. It, in 2021, Bitcoin networks consumed 100 terawatt hours. That's enough to wow. run Finland. 
for wow. a year. So that kind of puts it in perspective. It's yeah, like, okay, it yeah. we're, we're running Finland just so we can run cryptocurrency. Uh, so uh, not to get too technical here, but it uses uh, current uh, cryptocurrency today uses proof of work. And that's what the, all this computing power is. Proof of stake is slightly different, uh, different use of, of the technology and the way that it computes it. Ethereum, which is one of these mm. platforms that everybody's obviously using, mm. they think that they can cut their energy by using proof of stake by 99.95%. Wow. So that's like game changing, right? So now wow. maybe cryptocurrency really? comes out of the old you know, the the dark where it is right now because of this energy consumption. So right, anyway, right. proof of stake is another thing that you should keep your eye on, according okay. to MIT. According to MIT. <laughs> yeah. they, they know a few things. <laughs> they know a few things. Just, just, just a few. Just a few. You yeah. a steak, you cook, and then proof it. Proof, proof <laughs> good by eating it. <laughs> oh, you really are in Texas. Yeah, that, that's not a steak. I'll show you a steak. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the proof is, is the juice is flowing out of it? Does it taste right? Yeah, has it been seasoned yeah. enough? So what's tech connecting with you, John? All right, here's a headline for you. Australian scientists plan to resurrect the extinct Tasmanian tiger. Whoa! How can they do that? Well, I don't know if you're familiar with the Tasmanian tiger at all. This no, is kind of a legendary creature. Not the Tasmanian creature. devil. No, not the Tasmanian you see devil. On Daffy which Duck which and... still exists. Okay. Uh, but the Tasmanian tiger was a marsupial that lived in Tasmania, Australia. Uh, it's actually been extinct for, I think, well over 100 years now, but it's kind of been legendary. People claim they're always seeing them, like uh, they've been spotted. Okay. But scientists are pretty certain that this animal is completely extinct and not out there anywhere anymore. All right. So uh, there's a, a, a research company, um, and well, they've created a they created a, a lab called Thylacine, which is the, what the actual name of the Tasmanian okay. tiger is, yeah. the Thylacine. Right. The Thylacine Integrated Genetic Rest- Restoration Research, or TIGER, <laughs> with two R's, TIGER <laughs> Lab. Oh. They've, they've secured a $3.6 million philanthropic donation to start Holy working on moly. this. Okay. Uh, and, and apparently they've, you know, they're, they're working on the biotechnology behind it. What they're apparently doing is kind of taking a genome from a similar animal, a, a marsupial called the Dort. Okay. Um, uh, I think it's the Dort. Was the so like Dunner. genetically no, in the, the ballpark? Dunner, which is apparently a mouse-like little marsupial creature, oh. but shares a lot of genetic structure that was similar to the, the Tasmanian tiger. All right. Uh, and apparently they're kind of taking that, figuring out how to rearrange it. They've already mapped it out of how they can rearrange the it. The genetics. Turn it in, yeah, and turn okay. it into, into oh. this creature. And they're gonna, they're apparently getting ready to get started on it. This is somewhat similar to the technology that's been out there and proposed to, to bring back the woolly mammoth. Ah. Um, we don't, we're not talk, people aren't talking about it as much anymore, but there's a foundation who's trying to do that by 2027, apparently. And they've got like bring millions back. of dollars in funding already to kind of do that, too. Now That's what we need more of those. <laughs> well, you know, that's just it. That's the question that people have. And they bring this up in this article, at least, yeah. too, yeah. is like, why are we doing this? Is this really a necessary thing? Oh, and yeah, they're pointing this is out a like, hey, slope, doing this ahead. actually is potentially going to help them understand how to preserve other marsupial species that are maybe you know going extinct or are you know struggling sure, to survive. Sure, I don't know. Maybe you know it could be we're just getting ready to launch Jurassic World. You know, uh, the, yeah. our own version of it of some sort. At the bottom of the food chain. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and that was that is a point they bring up too. Is they are being yeah. very cognizant of the fact that like when they reintroduce an extinct animal into an ecosphere, like what does that mean? What's mm-hmm. going to happen? Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently, like one issue that's going on, or and a reason why again they're doing this is because the marsupial population, in particular, a lot of animals in Australia are dying off in mass because of an invasive species called the cane toad, <laughs> which has taken over much of the continent. Did not even come from Australia and is poisonous. And a lot of the animals oh, want to eat wow, these, and they're right. dying off. And it's 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 kind of wrecking the ecosystem in a way that it shouldn't be because it's not supposed to be there, and mm-hmm. these animals aren't supposed to be consuming it. So they're hoping what they can figure out from doing this can help them potentially preserve other animals or maybe even help them boost their genetic structure to survive these kind of mm. things. I don't know. Like, it does feel a little like, yeah, should we? You I'm going to go like, with the diabolical narrative on this one. Like, they're <laughs> testing this, they've got it, and then we're going to have T-Rex running around yeah, Chicago. Exactly. Yeah, well, the new, I don't know if you've seen the trailer for the next Jurassic World movie, but they're yeah. out now. You oh, know, are they? They're the dinosaurs out? are out in among the world us? among yes. us. Yeah, and, yeah, see, there you go. And wreaking havoc. So, yeah. yeah, so I don't know. You know, this could be this could be a bad thing. Uh, you know, I'm interested to see what happens here. You know, maybe if it be in Australia, that's far enough away that, you know, we don't have to worry about it. Right. Worry about Long it way to swim. Long you know? way to swim. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they put wings on them or something, you know, who knows? You know, oh, so. Good stuff. All right. Well, Randy Murphy, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate having you on the show. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I'm much appreciated. Yeah, thank day. you, sir. Until next time, uh, try not to resurrect any uh, <laughs> dead animals. Uh, and, uh, and and look out for the next battery, you know, that's yes. going to save us all. Yes, and, and as yes. always, please stay connected. 
right, Dean. We just spent an entire episode talking about intelligent cabinets. Yes, sir. So we should probably talk about Zebra's intelligent cabinets. I think that would be. I mean, idea. you know, that was kind of what Randy was doing. But let's right. let's get into the uh, the actual you know product themselves. Yes, so, let's do. The day to day use of enterprise mobile devices is integral to distribution, mm-hmm. warehousing, manufacturing, retail, and more. But relying on employees to locate, properly maintain, and return those devices can be a struggle. That costs your customers time and money. I think we've Bingo. established that. Yeah, absolutely. We so have. introducing Zebra Intelligent Cabinets, mm-hmm. the uh, rugged and durable storage solutions available in multiple configurations and security options designed to charge, maintain, and keep mobile devices cool and accessible. Cool. Like, cool. Cool like, you know, they like throw their collar up and like, yeah, daddy. <laughs> I don't know. think that's the cool. No, that's not. No, that's not. Intelligent Cabinets mean that no more time wasted on tracking down devices at the start of a shift waiting for a recharge or making surprise repairs or replacements. Monitoring options provide real-time visibility into device status, charge levels, and devices in use. So Sheriff Zam. Zam? Yeah. That was Zam. That's Sheriff Zam you in got charge right. of your devices there. He's watching out for you. Bring him in. Watching out for those employees and making sure they don't they don't uh, lose your stuff. 100%. Help your customers guard their asset investments and maximize the life of their mobile devices with Zebra Intelligent Cabinets. Check out the link in the show notes or contact your Zebra representative to learn more.